I am Carol Watwood, and I'd like to show you how to do a database search on PubMed. To begin, I click Databases. Before I get to PubMed, I'm going to pick a research topic. I select PubMed. I build a strategy within PubMed. I run my search, evaluate results, and retrieve the articles. With any of our databases, the process is pretty much the same. First, I develop a research question. Is there a link between diet and susceptibility to COVID-19? I pick key terms and break it into chunks, words or short phrases. I can think of each of these as a circle. In the middle of the three circles, combined with and, is my articles that have all three. Here's the home page of PubMed. My next step is to run my search on PubMed to search for COVID-19 susceptibility in diet. I enter my search terms COVID-19 susceptibility Diet. Search executes my search. Here are my search results. PubMed has searched 30 million references and found 10 that have all three terms. Each title hyperlink connects to an article, mostly peer reviewed. PubMed is not a full-text database, but most articles have full-text links. However, not all these full-text links are free. I look for a link that says Free, WKU, or LibKey Nomad. It's a green teardrop for a browser extension I've installed. When you click these links, you'll get free full-text or a link that says Request from Interlibrary Loan so you can request an electronic copy at no cost to you. What's going on behind the scenes here? To check, I go to my advanced search screen to see how PubMed has interpreted my search. Beside my search statement, I click Details. These are all the terms that PubMed has searched. It's thought of synonyms, plurals. This is a feature called automatic term mapping. It has added all these additional terms. One indicator of an effective search is that all three terms map to mesh terms or medical subject headings. Mesh terms under susceptibility I see disease susceptibility, mesh terms, diet mesh terms. These are sort of like hashtags, standardized terms used by PubMed indexers. There's a time lag before mesh terms are assigned to PubMed articles. References are automatically uploaded to PubMed by publishers daily, and mesh terms are added later. I'm going to click through by clicking my number of results and go back to my list of results. I can move around in PubMed using back and forward arrows. If I need to go back to the introductory screen, I click PubMed. Next, I evaluate my results list. Do these results address my research topic? Do they look pertinent? When I looked at the search details, are there other terms that I should try? Given the purpose of my search and available time, is this enough? I may not need to try all terms in all databases if I just need a few references. Last, I can add filters or limiters. Filters are used to cut down large results lists to a manageable size. Always use filters last to avoid losing potentially good articles. In PubMed, filters include years, language of publication, type of article, species, age, and other. Notice there's a nursing journals filter. When I click this, it limits to nursing journals. 
If I don't see what I want, click additional filters to see many more. My last step is to retrieve my full text articles. Many articles have attached full text. You can read the article on screen, save to your computer, or print to an attached printer. If you see the article and don't see a full text link, let's find one down here. Click Request from Interlibrary Loan. This article, check for full text. I don't see a full text link. I click Request from Interlibrary Loan to turn on one-click ordering. I sign in with my NetID and password. The form is auto-filled. I click Submit Request, Cancel to Cancel, an electronic copy is sent to my WKU email, usually within about two working days. So if we don't have an article, you don't have to pay for it. Next, I'd like to show you how to mark and save your results. I click Search Results to go back to my results list. To mark particular ones, I click the box beside them. Notice there's a Cite button. I can put my references in APA format. This box, and then I can put Send To. Clipboard saves it temporarily. Collection saves it more permanently. I'm going to take this out of my clipboard. Say I want to email an entire list to myself. I click Email. All results on this page. If I had marked certain ones, it would just send the marked ones. Format, I should change to Abstract so that I'll see the full version of the article in the full text links. Send Email sends all 10 of these with full text links to my email. If I want to print a copy of this list, I can use my browser print command. Google Scholar can also be used as a database. Let's see the same search in Google Scholar. COVID-19 Susceptibility Diet, the full text links will be on the right. In a separate page, I'll show you how the to make the library links show up on Google Scholar. Star is what I use to favorite. I can open the full text to the right of the article. Remember, there is little quality control in Google Scholar so always carefully evaluate what you find. The last thing I'd like to show you is our library research guide for nutrition and dietetics. It has quick links to commonly used databases, websites, and other information, as well as my contact information. To get there, I go to the home page, click Research Guides, Applied Human Sciences, Hospitality Management, Nutrition and Dietetics. Here are some of the resources I've been showing you, as well as useful textbooks, websites, and a copy of this orientation. Thank you for watching and stay healthy.